Anyway, let's welcome in our guests here to ring in the new year. The uh, president of the Berkeley County Board of Education, Pat Murphy. Pat, good morning. Good morning. Great to have you back. Nice to be here. And uh, the vice president of the BOE, Jackie Long. Jackie, welcome back. Good morning. I noticed you didn't come in with 47 pounds of candy this no, morning. I, I knew you were all candied out. <laughs> I don't remember being asked that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, Pat, my understanding is that you once had this guy, Matt Miller, as a student. Yes, I did. Can you tell me a little bit about this Matt Miller guy as a student? I remember one day. There okay. was well, there's the gremlin. It's Pat's microphone. That, there's, that there's your other gremlin right there. Okay. Uh, yeah. you're, you're good. Just, we'll, we'll figure it out as you talk. Keep talking. Okay. Um, I remember one day uh, we had a set of swings out. Uh, I used to work on PA systems here. I remember the. I heard it cracking it. You must have a... You got a good hum. Okay. How there you are we go. doing there? I think you got it. Yeah, okay. I think you're good. Good. All right. That was when I knocked on the wood there earlier. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, 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 I just tempted the gods on that one, and the radio gods, and they got yeah. Okay. I remember one day on the playground, there was a big crowd over around the swings on the right. Mm -hmm. Right across from the Big Johnnies. Remember the Big Johnnies? Yes. And usually when you had a big crowd, you had a big fight. So I ran over there, and there was Matt in the middle with all these little fourth-grade girls around him doing a wonderful Elvis impersonation. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I, I know he did other th things. He, uh, he, he and his brother Daryl were nice students. Katie, Katie his yeah. sister. Uh, did I have any others? Or no, uh, that's the whole. That's that's whole. the clan, yeah. yeah. And I went to school with your mom, <laughs> and I remember your granddad. I think he worked for the bakery. Yep, Schmidt's Bakery. But I remember he he did a wonderful impersonation of <laughs> Elvis. Well, I'd mean, love to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah. Yeah. We have time on the show. <laughs> uh, I remember those days. Yeah, you would uh, uh, flip the collar up. Uh, unbutton the shirt, you know, down to mid chest at uh, and at that yep. age, and uh, and then find a stick nearby that that worked as a microphone, and by, behind the swings. Don't ask me why the acoustics, I guess, were were good there. So was this a natural so. thing you just kind of doing on the spot, or had you been practicing this? Um, my, uh, I think it was my, my uncle Wayne uh, had a great record collection, and uh, and so we had a, a kind of small record collection at the house, and uh, there were several Elvis albums, and so that would be the thing to do to you know pop the Elvis album onto the record player, and so I learned and and knew a lot of Elvis, and so it just became, was Hound Dog guess, your a, best. I don't know, to be honest with you. Um, we, we, I'd try them all. Uh, a little less conversation. I know you've used that one oh, as yeah. a, a, a bumper, bumper music here on this show. So, uh, you know, kind of. Uh, oh, very nice. How old were you when this was so. going on? Um, ten. Yeah, ten. Ten? ten. ten or so, yeah. yeah. Well, we knew he'd be so. a performer by that uh, at that time. I yeah, guess. well, I, I ended up becoming a wedding singer for a short time. And, uh, and Pat came to uh, uh, do uh, photographs at one of the weddings. And uh, and he asked if I was doing Elvis. <laughs> no. Did I know about I was, your wedding singer not. background? Uh, no, I've tried to keep that quiet. Um, it, it just kind of slipped there. But uh, you know, I'm well out of that stage of life as well. So. Oh, Gilstrap can sing too. So maybe the two of you could. Uh, All right, we'll yeah. have to get together. Work yeah, we'll have, we'll, we'll have to do. Do that. you do Elvis also, or, or uh, no? Uh, no. Do, you, do you have another? I'm 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 more Irish tenor <laughs> ballad kind of songs. All right. You and John and no, Miller. I won't. No, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pat let, and Jackie, let's talk about the second half of the school year now as we get back from the break. Uh, tomorrow, I guess, is the first day back for students. Yes. Well, well before we begin, yeah, sure. John had asked a question one or two shows ago. That he doesn't remember. But, but he doesn't remember. the. But, but he He's said, old now, so he doesn't. Yeah, well, he said, uh, have you ever done something you regretted? And I, uh, the Admiral was sitting here. Uh, mm -hmm voted on something I, I don't remember and then we just kind of laughed it off and moved on but the the question has lingered in my mind for mm -hmm. long after that and i thought well you, you do make mistakes in government and i introduced and i wanted to ask your question i uh, sponsored a bill when i was in the legislature back in the 80s when drugs were a big problem still are but uh, everybody was trying to uh, at attack the problem discourage it and one bill that I <coughs> co-sponsored that I've always regretted was, uh, it was patterned after a federal law, which I think is still on the books, and that was when somebody was accused 
of being a drug dealer. They would take his car, they'd take all his possessions and sell it and use the money towards capturing other drug dealers. But uh, they did it before he had been given uh, a trial. So one day the, at the boys club, after I had done this bill and it was one of the books, uh, Doug Butch was the executive director and he said the police came down and gave him all these uh, CDs, all this good music. And uh, this guy, <laughs> this guy, this guy that was accused was found innocent. So he came down to the boys club and said, where are my CDs? Well, they were all over Martinsburg. They just put them out and let the kids take them. And, uh, and, and it, that hit home. You know, I mean, you had to you had to freeze dry the, uh, the 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 accused's assets so they didn't skip out on you, but dispersing them without uh, the thing. I, I think that's a law that we have on the still have on the books. I regret that I was a co-sponsor of. So that's that's one example of I I, th I personally feel I dropped the ball. Yeah, that's an interesting recall, and that's yeah. a, the equivalent of state-sponsored theft. If you think about it, you're, you're well, and it does happen at, at the federal level as well, yeah. even down to, and I don't, I'm going to get the details wrong, but if, if people are, are stopped for speeding and mm. they have a bunch of cash, the, the law enforcement agencies can seize the cash on the presumption that it's dealing with drugs yeah. and, and it's. That happened on Route 9 and around Charlestown within the last 10 years. I don't remember yeah. the specific case, but I do remember it became quite a case. And it's a real effort to get that money back. Mm-hmm. If ever, if ever, probably. Right. It's one of the reasons why I never travel with an incredibly large stash of cash in my car, Jackie. This is <laughs> I'm afraid of seizure. I just hate it when you get the windows open and the and your hundred dollar bills are flowing out. You know, now that does happen to you. Though. That's the difference there. I yeah. thought that was Stubblefield. That was Stubblefield <laughs> in his Tesla. He yeah. can't. But in the Tesla, you can hear the the, the bills flapping. So yeah. it's that's why it's, Gilstrap always follows Stubblefield home when they <laughs> when they leave here. Uh, and it, but now back to our uh, classes begin tomorrow. Students are, are off today here, uh, Jackie and Pat. And uh, we've finished the, unofficially the first half of the school year, right? When, when is the actual official semester break? About three uh, weeks or so? The 13th? Two weeks. I, you, I, I, I can't I answer the question. Yeah, I don't have the calendar. Yeah, I don't have the calendar. Well, it's in mid January. It's well, like the. the the teachers were supposed to finish the uh, exams, semester exams, before Christmas. So mm -hmm. I guess it was at Christmas that uh, yeah, they did. Yeah, because that used to be later, and it uh, has moved up. Okay, come, come look closer to your mic when you talk, Jack. Well, okay. I can't get yeah, pull, pull the mic to the edge <laughs> of the <laughs> desk then. Yeah, there you go. Okay, that's better. Is that better? Yes. Okay, very nice. Because you, you, you're soft-spoken. And oh, really? until, until you get angry, you're yeah, soft. That's the first time anybody's ever told me that. But yeah. I'll I'm, take that I'm as waiting. a compliment. <laughs> yeah. When's the next BOE meeting? January 8th. Oh, January 8th. Yes. Hey, I think that's Elvis's birthday, isn't it? Oh, well. I don't know, Boy, Matt. You I was going to say, after everything we talked earlier, I should know January that, but 15th. I don't. It's, uh, it's in January, right? <laughs> All right, so let's get to it then. The second half of the school year, what are some of the big issues you have to tackle for the Board of Education? January 8th. Well, we have... have we have to uh, begin looking uh, wh whether we're going to renew the superintendent's contract mm -hmm. and uh, also how long will that contract be. Uh, that's the top of the list for the, uh, uh, for the board and the personnel. Uh, we're going to be looking for a second uh, assessment. I forget the names of them, uh, the elementary and the uh, secondary tests, but uh, we're going to be looking at the, for that to see if there's been any improvement and the academic uh, performance of our students. Uh, we're still trying to, we're, I saw over the holidays, bus drivers uh, were tr being trained, because uh, so I, I thought, wow, it's unusual to see all these buses driving around. Well, we, they were out getting the hours in on the, uh, yeah. the road. Uh, so we had people working on the holiday there. Uh, they were paid. The, the candidates, I don't believe, are paid. No, they're not paid until yeah. they are hired. Okay. And then it's um, 60 days or 90 days, mm -hmm. or depending on when they start. If they start beginning of the school year, they're not paid until the after the second semester. So uh, I'm not sure if they are hired now when they're paid, but I think it's 90 days. Okay. So then we have the uh, excess levy in May, so we have to begin uh, discussing what the, the uh, board will uh, 
do there at, with the input from the our administrators. Uh, we're trying to, uh, we'll be out recruiting uh, employees at all levels. Uh, uh, the other day I ran in at uh, Mr. Fairclaw's funeral of one of the, Mr. Pill, former board member, said you ought to be uh, recruiting uh, uh, realtors because the market's down right now and people are trying to find ways to make ends meet, which was a very good uh, suggestion and I passed it on to uh, our uh, director of personnel. Um, we are going to be working on a budget uh, that'll be coming up uh, as a board and as the administration. Uh, we The big issue that we really have facing us is this was the last of the COVID money. What are we going to do with all the personnel? If, you know, if we're going to be moving them back or we're going to be trying to pick up some of those positions like nursing and counseling that we've used COVID money. Uh, that's uh, How much of that is left to be distributed, Pat? Well, I... I'd have to, I'd have, I, I can't. Ballpark, roughly? Well, we, we had a total of 60 some million. So we have a, a, somewhere on this stack of papers, I have the number of people that we have to decide how many of them we're gonna pick up in, that we can afford to. But we can't, we can't carry 60 some million that we got out of the feds, mm -hmm. uh, for well, sure. And we didn't use all that 60 million for, <coughs> excuse me, personnel. We, mm -hmm. Oh, I think it's about 16 million left, and I 16? could be wrong. I could definitely be wrong because I know somebody from the board office will tell me I was wrong when I <laughs> finished this. But it's um, just looking for a ballpark, not holding you anything. Yeah. At, at the personnel level, were um, these hires directly related to health-related no, issues? No, no. Uh, the big concern and a lot of the money was spent on uh, instruction that year. That the like classroom uh, instruction. Right. Well, we had we had to have the one year that they were at home. With their devices, which uh, I, I, I'm curious to see, and if, when when are we going to decide whether that all that money that was spent was was uh, cond uh, uh, positive, or did, did, were we just spinning our wheels on ice? With How will we know? Uh, there will be testing. Uh, there will be studies done. Uh, personally, I think. Uh, I, Going back to sports, I think we should have redshirted the whole bunch hmm. and given them a fifth year like you did in college sports and stuff. Uh, I, I, I think there would have been exceptions. There were kids who benefited with the in-home instruction. Uh, we still have students who are doing virtual. Uh, uh, they, they, uh, they, they just can't function in the school environment, but they, they can do the work. But uh, by and large, I think uh, we should have redshirted the whole bunch. And uh, Let, let's assume that there are one or two people in our audience who are not sports oriented and don't know what red shirt means. Why don't you explain to them, not to me, of course, but to them what red shirt means? I'll let Matt, since he's your sports guy. <laughs> Used to be. It means uh, that, that basically you, uh, if you're an athlete, you go through practices, you participate, you're a part of the team, but when a game time comes, you don't participate in the game. But then you don't lose any eligibility. So if you come in as a freshman, typically that's the year you redshirt. So you're part of the team, you're practicing, you're getting the environment, you're, you're getting your education, you're kind of learning your way, if you will. And then your second year in college, which would be maybe your sophomore year in the classroom, now you're a redshirt freshman on the playing field, and then you still have your four years of eligibility. I, I, so it would be uh, the same as holding everybody back a year. That's it. Right. Yep. Gotcha. I have a little bit of different opinion of that. I think that would have been okay if, we, if that was deci decided and the decision made statewide. But for us to hold just Berkeley County, our Berkeley County students, all of our Berkeley County students back mm -hmm. a year, I, I don't know that – Many of them had mental health issues. Would that have added to that um, mm -hmm. situation? I, I mean, I think it was a lot to think about to, to do that. I, it certainly would have created an issue with another group of kindergartners coming in. Yeah. Because where, had, now where do you put yeah, everybody? Yeah. You'd have had double. But, um, but it's an interesting thought because those kids essentially, from what we understand, yeah. really lost almost a full year of academic achievement. Or a little longer, really. 
And, yeah. and and the other thing is, at the time, you didn't have a crystal ball, realizing you would be shut down for a year. I mean, a mm -hmm. lot of people thought, well, this would be a week or two, mm -hmm. and we'll be back into school. And we didn't realize the extent that the COVID uh, virus had upon the population and its uh, con contagious uh, nature. I think John asked, excuse me, Matt. No, go ahead. Uh, you asked what positions that we were referring to, and, and actually it was academic coaches and um, – uh, social uh, services, uh, social workers, uh, nurses. Uh, so the people in that the people in that category were they hired on as, for lack of a better term, temporary employees, or were they hired on? No, they as, were hired on as regular employees, hoping that through attrition we could possibly absorb some of those positions, and we might, and we might, and, and when the board discusses that, you know, we might be able to pick many of them up. But uh, there, it was a lot, it was a good many positions. So they we told they were told that from the board, mm -hmm. especially that you know we we want these people to realize that uh, at the end of the COVID money that they might not have a position. Uh, many of them were permanent subs, mm -hmm. which would go back to. Um, so when do you have to make this decision? This year. Damon Wright, who's on the board with you, of course, says the COVID money runs out on September. So before then, the board and admin must decide on personnel, positions like academic coaches, counselor positions, et cetera, that have helped. We can't absorb them all, which is effectively what you were saying yeah. previously, Jack. Jackie Long and Pat Murphy, our guests here uh, on the program. Uh, when do you anticipate having next year's school calendar available? Well, we have to <clears> – <throat> next year's – we'll have to uh, – we have a couple of hearings in the spring, so it's part of the uh, the budget process, and we'll have that uh, in May, I guess. Well, and the calendar committee usually meets. I think uh, Dr. Uh, Tanner Burkhart stated that they will have started meeting. Will start meeting soon, mm -hmm. and they'll um, develop the calendar, and then it will come out for um, us to look at and. Uh, approve or disapprove and these uh, go to the state. Uh, these jumping back here, that was a Kathy Cloud question, by the way. These positions that you have to decide on regarding the COVID money, uh, can will some of these decisions be solved by natural attrition? Do some of these people kind of move on as they do anyway? And is this an issue going on throughout all 55 counties in West Virginia right now in terms of how to retain e Nationally. extra personnel? Nationally. Yeah, it, it, every one, I mean, the whole thing. Uh, an interesting thing, and I'll give you a little scoop here in your news, is we got a booklet last spring on the COVID funding. And Berka County uh, received from the three funds a uh, total of $62 million, And our uh, enrollment was about 19.8. Canalva County had uh, 23,974 students. And they received, uh, oh shoot, we're over here, 130 million. So how did they disperse this money? And then you look over. Well, why did they get twice as much when they only uh, have 20, 25 percent more? That's what I'm saying is that the uh, the uh, how how you know Charleston <laughs> seems to have a bigger, stronger magnet than the Eastern Panhandle. <laughs> Uh, here. Well, who made the decision on this? Did it I, Fed decisions or state I, decisions? I would say it was a state decision. Mm -hmm. And uh, another county, uh, Mercer County, got about the same amount of money, and they only had 8,560 suits. And they got the same as Berkeley County? Well, we, we got 62, and they got, uh, excuse me, they're 63. So they got uh, more Maybe money more. than we did, and we had it with a uh, half, less than half of the population. So th Did, th these are questions that people will be examining later on, and you'll be wondering, well, who was, you know, was it the uh, Mercer County had a uh, person in a key position in the State Department or in the governor's office? I don't know. But I, uh, That comment didn't come from me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, we were all wondering it, right? Did, yeah. Did that money have to be used in a specific way when yes, it came definitely. to you? you yeah. had, what what yeah. were those ways you could use that money? Well, you uh, Michael Height, by the way, says that was a state board of education decision, and those would be unelected well, people, by the way, appointed by the governor. Yeah, yeah. Mike, Mike, uh, appreciate that uh, timely <laughs> insertion there. Uh, 
We, we had limitations. I have uh, in this booklet, I have this, uh, that list. One of the things we, uh, I, I wish we had done, you know, you're always Monday morning quarterbacking, your, even yourself. Uh, I wish we had spent some of the money on some uh, air quality issues in our schools, uh, which because of the nature of the COVID virus, we could have. Uh, we couldn't build buildings as such, okay. although somebody built a, fo a baseball field down at Marshall University. <laughs> well, <laughs> about ten, that was about, what, well, 10 million or something? Yeah. And I think we did get some money for filtration and oh, some we had things some like money. that. Yeah. We, right. we did use that for that, but as far as spending more of it, I wish we More of it. Uh, yeah. Hey. You know, it was so new to everybody, sure. and, and you had to follow the specific guidelines, which, as we know in the state, some didn't. Um, mm -hmm. So there's an opioid settlement chunk of money coming to Berkeley County. Is that, does some of that go to the schools as well? No, I don't know. We, uh, I have a guy down in Jefferson County is the chair of that committee, but uh, I don't think we've reached out to ask him. Yeah, uh, Matt. Matt Harvey, Harvey. yeah. Harvey. In studio from the Board of Education, the President, Pat Murphy, Vice President, uh, Jackie Long. You mentioned one of the decisions that you have to make this year is the one-year contract your superintendent is under, and I don't un expect you guys to go into detail about that because it's a personnel issue, but I do recall he was voted in on a three-to-two decision, and I don't remember how you guys were voting on the three and the two. Pat, how did you vote on that? We were split. Were you thumbs up or thumbs down? Uh, thumbs down. And Pat, uh, and Pat, some Pat against Jackie four, uh, and I, I don't know uh, if you have set specific criteria in terms of how you make a decision going forward. Is that anything you can discuss uh, or a, a time frame for when you have to actually make uh, uh, these decisions? Well, we can make the decision uh, from this day forward, mm -hmm. uh, January to May. Uh, I, I'll go ahead and say I, I think the board is inclined to renew the contract. The debate will be over the length of the contract. What is a typical length when you contract with a superintendent on on average? Or you can whatever? only you have a maximum four, a minimum mm -hmm. one, by code. All right. I will say this: I don't know <clears throat> exactly what the other board members are thinking, so um, we've discussed a little bit, but not uh, in great lengths. So. It was a difficult year to be selected as a superintendent because of some fun things that happened. Uh, I say fun sarcastically. One, you're coming out of COVID, and you really still are because of the funding that's remaining. You have the cyber attack, which uh, clearly wasn't his fault, uh, but it was something that he had to deal with as a superintendent. You had to deal with uh, as a board. Are those things factored in when you look to uh, judge or grade how a superintendent performed in their first year on the job? I would think they would be. I mean, how what the outcome was uh, in those situations, how he handled um, everything that he's dealt with. Mm -hmm. uh, academics for me is a huge issue, but um, you can't make uh, wonderful, fantastic strides in one year under a one-year contract. And to his credit, I know I, I was a negative vote, but to his credit, uh, we uh, faced a, uh, a cyber attack. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also passed a major school bond uh, uh, during that time, the biggest in the state's history. Uh, we had some other issues that uh, he, he, he did a good job in leading on. So uh, uh, I, I, think, I think that, uh, like I said, the, the issue will be the length of the contract more, more likely than who has the contract. And I, do, I agree with that. What do, you, what do you think is a reasonable length? You've done the one year, and that certainly puts your superintendent in kind of a lame, lame duck position for the entire year. What's maybe a more reasonable length to consider? Well, I, first I challenge your assertion there. I, uh, there are superintendents in this county who only get one-year contracts. You mean states? In the state, mm -hmm. yes. Excuse me. Yeah, that, that doesn't make it any less lame, yeah, lame no, duck, I mean, Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, but, but it's also the, the key – issue when you evaluate a superintendent is you can have all these other things but the key issue by code and and uh, even by the constitution is the education of our children the the performance of our children mm -hmm. and uh, that that in the code is the only thing you have to do when you're doing the evaluation is you have to have some sort of indication of what the uh, academic performance of your students are 
Well, and actually, the one-year contract issue mostly started when last, actually last year, we there were 21 or 22 superintendent vacancies that the state filled, uh, counties filled with people from uh, HR directors or s other people m moving into those positions or somebody from another area uh, moving into those positions. And I think that's actually how the one-year contract issue or predicament started, mostly because before that I had very rarely heard of a county giving a one-year contract. But uh, after that, it seemed to be the norm, at least for those positions. You mentioned very early on <clears throat> in this interview that among the first actions to happen is a second assessment of student performance. So when we evaluate student performance in uh, you know, West Virginia, the numbers aren't good. So are we evaluating against a national standard or are we evaluating against other counties within West Virginia? Or if neither of those, what's the metric? How do we judge the, how well we're doing? Well, the, the key is how many of our students are on level, performing on level or above. And the level is? Well, if they're in the fourth grade, are they performing? That's a national level? standard? No, no, that's, I, that's a standard that I as a former teacher assess them on. I, I, um, and that's not happening in this state uh, or this county. We have more students to the south of the uh, level than they do on level. And that's why you're seeing the success of uh, alternative schools for children mm -hmm. is one reason. Um, but uh, nationally, we're in one of the bottom counties. So is our goal to be the best of the worst in West Virginia? The, you know, I heard somebody say that one time uh, at, at a meeting. And no, that's not my goal. We, we, we what Berkeley County has a lot of positive things going for it. We have the highest number of nationally certified teachers, which is a very demanding process. And there they're compared to other national teachers. I got my nose keeps running here. But uh, uh, so, you know, we're, we're, we, have, we have some outstanding points in our list of accomplishments here in Berkeley County Schools. Uh, not just sports, by the way. Uh, which we're all proud of, uh, our volleyball, our football, our, our sports there. But but I, uh, but and we're but we have some outstanding teachers in this system. I was in a classroom uh, a couple before the break. Third grade teacher over Tomahawk, petite little lady. I, she couldn't have been much taller than her students, but man, you could tell the energy was in that classroom, and 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 how great a job she was doing. I don't think she's got the national certified thing. That's a that's something you do outside of your job, just trying to attain that. But we have, but we have, I think, and I've said it on this program, we move them along. You know, instead you're of, talking about promoting students who, yeah, are, who yeah, shouldn't I, be promoted. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've said instead of playing pomp and circumstance, we had to play the song to rawhide. You know, keep moving, moving. <laughs> you know. I, and, and not to interrupt you, but I don't think we're the only county that moves yeah. them along. I think that's the norm. It is the norm now to move them along. Uh, <coughs> you don't want Johnny to get a, feel inadequate or. Um, <laughs> Anecdotally, it seems that that's not just a, a statewide norm. I think anecdotally, it seems that that's a nationwide norm. Yes. Um, everybody gets a trophy. So, but when we drill down on the data, I know we haven't done the, the next assessment, but based on what we've seen before, what are we most okay at? Can we say that, or, or worse, however you want to go at it? Um, are we okay sort of with science, but not with reading? Are we doing okay with math, but not with science? Yeah, in uh, language we're better than in math. Uh, science uh, is picked, I don't know if it's picked up in the fifth grade testing or uh, in the eighth grade testing, I, I don't recall. But, but I can show you a spreadsheet here. Now this was done in the fall, so you have summer loss there. But Which but I think is, uh, that's done in the fall, so to me it's not really accurate of, yeah. Uh, because of not having school all summer. Yeah, and 
and a lot of those kids are. Is that a state BOE decision instead of applying that in the spring? Is that why it's done it the is. fall? No, no. We well, your legislature sets a school year. Yeah. Burn. Well, no. When you begin. I mean the test. When your test. Oh, oh, the state. But yeah, yeah, the state. State. The state. And, and it's, you know, you want to start off the year, but I, I have a sheet here for K-5. And uh, you have about oh, 900 students who are in the green, which is on or above level. But then over when you look at uh, the students who are three or more levels below, and this is K-5, so, you know, where's a first grader? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, uh, well, the testing was given to third graders. But we had 853 students who were three years or more below. So we almost had as many at the extreme bottom <coughs> as at the top. Yeah, 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 yeah. Berkeley well, County. And, and I, I don't want to blame everything on COVID but, uh, because it started way before that. Uh, but I think COVID, especially for those um, indicators, I think has a lot to a lot to do with it yeah. but the problem persists it's still a problem yeah. oh, that needs yeah. to, be, to be fixed so so when we do this next assessment that's coming up and, and let me before i say that i i want to thank jackie i got a tour of some schools frankly it was the day before they they left for for the for the break but what i saw it at winchester elementary winchester avenue and marlowe Marlo, I saw a lot of inspired teachers, a lot of inspired kids. I saw second graders writing code for little computer things. I saw, so anecdotally, or just from my own view, everything is, it, it looked pretty normal and enthusiastic. And now, they didn't know we were coming. They had no idea. Okay. So, you know, so it well, wasn't. I mean, the principal it, it, did, but she, uh, I don't think she gave them a. Right. Um, and the problem might not necessarily be with those who are actually attending class so much as it is with those who aren't regularly attending class, mm -hmm. which unfortunately is too large of a number. Right. So that's so that brings yes. me to, to my next question. If the next assessment isn't better than what, what we see here, then what? I mean, if is that a is that a superintendent problem? Is it a board of education problem? Is it throw more money at it problem? I mean, how do we if if the problem is not improved, how do what strings do we pull to okay. get it I to be think, improved? Go ahead, Jay. I think some of our issues. We have great teachers. I I will say that, but we have uns, many uncertified teachers that are teaching a subject that they're learning how to teach. Um, and I don't blame them at all because I appreciate so much that they're in our classrooms. But that's that's the issue, I feel. We have uncertif some uncertified teachers and uh, so many perm subs. And Jackie and I often disagree, and this will be a point that I'll jump in here and do that. But to, to emphasize what she just said, this state has 1,705 teachers who are uncertified. Berkeley County has 253 of those 1,700. So we have 15% of the uh, uncertified teachers in this state are in Berkeley County. Now, I want to uh, emphasize, a lot of them are doing a good job, but they just don't have the paper. They don't have the certification. They don't have the stamp. Does a pay bump come with a piece of paper? Yes. Yes. Uh, well, it comes with a permit. You, you right. get a permanent yeah. job. job. Yeah, you don't have to worry about somebody. They they may be worried about somebody coming in. We want to get somebody in who's certified, even though sometimes the uncertified the certified person may not be doing as good a greater job as the uncertified person. But I forgot my original disagreement with Jackie there. But I, I'm glad I I wanted just to point out we are in an economy here. And our legislators are facing the same problem. We are in a market here where it costs more to live here than in other parts of the state. But this state has this, equal, everybody is equal. Everybody gets the same. So our, we can't get state troopers. We can't get child protection workers. We can't get Department of Highway workers. And we can't get people in the education system, not just teachers, bus drivers, Cooks, yeah, you still have 42 service jobs that aren't filled. And this state doesn't want to recognize the fact that the success of this area through the stimulus of the economic development of this state 
has created a disproportionate burden upon the public servants of this area to survive and live here. Well, we and we got evidence of that from Magistrate Daryl Schull, who did a study on evictions, and the eviction rate in Berkeley County is astronomically larger than in Kanawha County, mm-hmm. as are the rents, and therefore the eviction rates. And, and, and this isn't necessarily because people aren't working. As we know, the unemployment rate here is very low. It's because they can't afford to live here while they're working here. And so you have the rescue mission director in here telling you about people living in tents, grandparent, uh, three levels of generations trying to survive in a tent, and he's out trying to help get them shelter in this, in this weather. So, so it's, it, it's a broad issue. And Jackie and I serve on a legislative committee for school board members statewide. We brought up locality pay. Oh, that didn't we, go over well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I, I, we understand what our legislators are trying to accomplish. In our, and if, even if they get locality pay, it, it probably won't be that much to match the cost of living in this area. So, uh, so I had a, a board member from, I won't say what county, but. Uh, when we were talking about that, I talked to him in the parking lot, and he said, well, I don't agree with it because our people will come to your county. And I said, no, that very seldom ever happens, ever. When, you know, we get some out of people from other counties move here, and many times they move back because it's not home. Well, if his theory held true, then all the teachers in Berkeley County would move to that person's county where they would have the same salary and a lower exactly. cost of living, and right. they're not doing that. So logic would collapse mm-hmm. that argument in about 10 seconds. Matt yeah. Miller. What is the budget for education in Berkeley County right now, and how does it compare with budgets really from across the state? Well, the budgets are determined by the student body, so you, you can't, you can't uh, uh, say, well, a county with 800 students, their budget's going to be disproportionate right. and stuff. But, Berkeley County's budget last year was $234 million. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, a large portion of that went to uh, personnel, staffing, and everything. The state gave us, in the state aid formula, $112 million. Um, then local taxpayers, and all the money is taxpayer money. It's not, mm-hmm. it's not my money or Jackie's money. It's their money. Uh, but we, uh, we had... Between the local levy and the uh, excess levy, we we had property taxes of eighty nine million dollars here in the county. Concern I have, one concern, or many academics and everything, but is public education subsidizing economic development? Uh, it's uh, we give to industries that come in here and contribute to the to the growth. <laughs> Keep talking, Matt. You're good. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll ask on Matt now. Camera right? adjustment. You're fine. You keep talking. Okay. We, we, we give tax breaks to industries to come in here. So who gets, who, who takes the cut? Well, pr- our property taxes are one of the big issues. Mm-hmm. And that, and all that equipment and everything that uh, is owned by the, uh, not by the industries, but by the economic development group down in Charleston, that money is now tax. That, this, that property is tax free. So we have. Uh, I saw the numbers, but I forget what it was. But, but that that uh, tax cut is absorbed by the school system. We cannot tax on that property the taxes that would be generated here, but yet. That industry is driving up because of the economic growth, the, the jobs that people are getting, the higher pay. And so we, we, are, uh, we, we are subsidizing economic development because we cannot tax those, uh, th- that equipment. And it's, it's, uh, it, it, I, I just question whether we should be, shouldn't be questioning as a school system as a community, our state government say, look, if you're going to give a tax break, we support it. But don't make us pay for it. You all find the money to offset that break and not deprive the local school system, which increases the, uh, the property values. You wouldn't believe what we're paying for land now. 
Oh, yeah. I would. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, and we we just lost a teacher at Spring Mills who was the academics. Uh, she was involved. She was there, but she just couldn't make it financially. Single, uh, single person. So she went to Washington County. So she communicated back to, to another teacher how Washington County is under pressure from Frederick County. And Frederick's under pressure from Montgomery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like a domino. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it, it's just a big sucking noise, the drain of people going because they can't afford to live here, but they can afford to drive there and then live here. We've got about three minutes left before we get out. I want to ask you real quickly about the effects of uh, Hope Scholarship money and whether or not that's something you're beginning to see now as uh, more students start to take advantage of this, and are you accounting for it next year? We actually had a decrease of the full-time equivalent students of 24 students. Normally, we would come in here and tell you we had 100, 200 new students, but this year we actually have 24 fewer students than last year, and so that's the impact. Uh, well, and actually, there was more more than that that uh, that scholarship affected. I think it was around 400 Jim Butts totals. Right, so. but it, so it effectively you netted 24 less because the growth of three or 400 yes. students has been negated by the, those 400 plus who have left the public yes. school system. And, and financially, 24 students, I, I would presume that's not really a burden that is going to amount to much to you. That'd be well, a teacher. anything's a burden. I mean, that'd be a teacher. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, but mm-hmm. they are spread out throughout the system. Right. That, that's the problem is that um, where you have growth, you, can only, you have class limitation sizes on uh, K through 6 grades. So if you get a 20... 29th student because you can get up to three extra students and be paid the teachers paid for it but if you get the 29th student then you have to hire another employee you mean 20 25 and well 20 25 is your class size limit but you can go they, three extra they yeah. can go up three extras three extra. yeah. but you pay the teacher extra money for the three extra students yes. uh, if you get three students you get 12 percent pay uh, 12 percent pay which rates. we do a lot of. Have you been able to hire the aides for the K through three legislation that was passed by our legislature? Uh, I, th- I think we have we have filled those jobs. Could you come a little closer, your mic, Jack? Uh, we have filled those jobs with our special needs aides. So yeah, so we're short. We're so short. it's like a rug. <clears throat> uh, we special needs uh, aides have gone over to the first grade, and now we're struggling to find special needs aids for uh, the kids so it's generated a problem <clears throat> well any of the people <clears throat> excuse me who will not survive the covid cuts as the funding runs out be able to be moved into some of these spots yes uh, they will if there were service positions but most of those positions are professional positions i see so. hey we, we're out of time we got a final minute coming up pat and jackie appreciate you being here and pat i'm going to take you out with the rawhide theme here we'll just move them along right <laughs>